the Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna share with you an easy method to create an escape room puzzle using a Raspberry Pi, a touch screen, and a little bit of code using a module called Pi Simple GUI. Lately, I've been playing around with a module in Python called Pi Simple GUI, or Graphical User Interface, and I've really fallen in love with how easy it is to use and all of the different applications you could have to create graphical interfaces that can interact with your code or in the case of a Raspberry Pi with inputs and outputs to trigger different actions. All of these things put together make a great opportunity for an escape room puzzle. And since I haven't done an escape room puzzle in a while as one of my videos, I thought it would be great to share one with you today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take the different uh, components, the Pi Simple GUI module, a little bit of Python code, a Raspberry Pi and a touch screen, and turn it into a touch screen puzzle like you would find in a lot of puzzle solving games or even in an escape room. Most of the time in escape rooms, we're limited to physical puzzles and less with the touch screen. But using Pi Simple GUI and a Raspberry Pi, it's very easy to start incorporating these kinds of puzzles that we normally only see in video games into the real world. So without further ado, let me show you how you can make a really neat counter or dial puzzle using the Raspberry Pi, Pi Simple GUI, and a touchscreen. If you're not sure the kind of puzzles that I'm talking about here with the dial or counter, it's puzzles like this one here from a Nancy Drew uh, mystery game. And here you can see that you need to click the different counters or the different boxes. And in turn, every time you click a box, it controls more than one of the other boxes. Here you can see another one. And this is the one that I actually modeled my puzzle after. Only five different individual boxes or counters. And it's just gonna rotate through a set list the same list every time they don't change in uh, a set number of letters in this case or numbers is what I'm gonna use, the numbers zero through nine. And so every time you click one, it controls more than one except for the fourth digit, which actually only just controls itself. Here's a glimpse of what it'll look like when we're finished. I modeled it up in PySimple GUI and you can see here that we do have five different digits or counters and we're going to have a button underneath each one and each button will control more than one of the counters except for of course the fourth one which will be similar to the Nancy Drew puzzle we looked at. If we take a look at the code here, I'm gonna import the PySimple GUI module as well as the func tools and the random modules in order to be able to create some random lists for the initial position of the counters, which I've just called the counters list. It's gonna take and create five digits from zero to nine that are random and print out what they are. And then it's also gonna create the code which is gonna to need to be solved. And that code is simply going to do the same thing, create five random digits from zero through nine in order for us to match and know when we've solved the puzzle. As you can see here in green, I also have an option where you could just simply set those values statically and it would always start with the counters in the same position and have the same finished code. As we look here at the layout, it might look a little confusing, but I'll just show you how it's laid out. I'm gonna have a frame at the top that I control the width of, which is for a text element just being the title. And each frame is basically gonna be a column that's going to have the counter text element that gets updated and then a button below that and those text and button elements are labeled zero through four for the positions one through five. Now that might seem a little bit confusing as you look here, but I did it so that it would be consistent with the way that Python numbers its lists. The first element in a list is always considered uh, the zero element. And so I kept that consistent all the way through. The layout is just basically gonna lay out each one of those frames and then put in the text and button elements as required. If you watch my last video on a full screen Raspberry Pi Python script, you'll see here the elements that are necessary necessary in order to get it full screen on a Raspberry Pi touchscreen. And then here you're gonna see the event loop, which is where all the magic is gonna happen for this particular script. The default event loop always says uh, to check the events and the values when it reads the window. And then the default if statement, of course, is that if the window is closed or exited, then it's gonna break from that and close the script. All of these else if or elif 
statements are then going to be what happens when you push each one of the buttons. So when you push the first button, which is button zero, here's what it's going to do. It's going to increment each of the counters that it affects. And if it finds that that counter is now greater than nine, it's going to reset it to zero. Simple way to do a counter within a certain set of values. If it reaches beyond where you want it to, you just reset it back to the lowest value, and then it'll just cause it to cycle through continually. So if I was just to capture what that first button is doing, it's going to control the first, second, fourth, and fifth counter. Now below those if statements, which are just going to cycle those counters, it's also going to update the text on those counters to the new value so that it will show up for the user. And then this next if statement is actually going to be what compares the code that we set at the beginning to the current position of the counters. And if it finds that those two lists are the same, then it is actually going to update all of the counters to a big capital X, which will tell you that you've solved the puzzle. Of course, you could make it go to a different screen altogether or you know, make something flashy happen. But in this case, I'm just going to turn each of those counters to a capital X, which is going to indicate that the puzzle has been solved. And then if those two lists are not the same, the counters, current position, and the code, then it's just going to print that to the terminal window just for the sake of troubleshooting. Moving on to the next button, it's going to be the same thing. Again, updating those counters that are affected. In this case, the second button or button one controls the first, second, and third counter. Same statement. Again, it's going to compare those lists and see if the puzzle's been solved. If not, it's just going to print that they're not the same to the terminal window. Same thing for button two, which is the middle button. It controls the second, third, and fourth counters. And so it's going to do the same kind of comparison and update those three. Button three, which is the fourth button, is going to do the same thing. Of course, it only updates the fourth counter. And then the last button, which labeled button four, but it's the fifth one or furthest right is going to control the second, third, and fifth counters. As we load it up on the computer, you can see here that we can click along on all of the different buttons. They do what I've said they're going to. They control the correct counters. And as we cycle through them, you can see every time it gets to nine, it just resets back to zero. To the user, even though it looks like there's a few steps in the code, it's going to be completely seamless. There's going to be no pause or hesitation. And it works really well. Like I said, I chose to display the code here that you're trying to achieve. But of course, you could find that element in your escape room. And it'll have to solve another puzzle in order to get it. And then the user would never see what the code is until they've already deciphered the clue. Here's what it looks like when you've solved the puzzle. Trying it out on an actual Raspberry Pi touchscreen, you can see that it functions exactly the same and accomplishes the same kind of thing. As I was going through this myself, even though I know how to solve this, did I have a little bit of a brain glitch, but as you can tell, I did eventually get it right and be able to solve it getting those uh, all five X's to show up on the screen. And of course, as I said before, you can use that solved puzzle now to trigger a new screen that would display another clue to the next puzzle. It could also be used to trigger a mag lock or a light or anything else. And that's it. As you can see, I left this project fairly basic. I didn't use graphics or uh, things that you could do to dress it up a little bit and match the motif from an actual escape room but I hope it serves as inspiration for the kinds of logic puzzles and things that you can create with a touch screen and a little bit of code to start building and offering the kinds of puzzles that have typically only been available in video games. Having done many different escape room challenges myself, I grow tired after a while of the same old elements over and over again. The directional padlocks that don't work very well, the three or four digit number or letter padlocks, and of course magnets, which are always my pet peeve, especially when one object with a magnet can take the place of another in the same escape room. But adding touch screens to your escape room scenarios and being able to control whatever is displayed on them and how the user interacts with them is a really powerful way to take it to the next level and increase the tech in an escape room scenario. I hope you'll find many different ways that you can use it in your own escape room and I have some ideas for one I'd like to try in the future. If you like these kind of videos, let me know by giving them a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, and checking back every week as I add new projects for things that I'm interested in and new concepts that I want to try out. 
If you want to leave me a comment below, let me know what you think or give me a suggestion for a future video. And if you want to contact me, my information is in the description below. Until next time, in all your DIY projects, whether you're looking to escape or helping others to, don't be afraid to be balder.